Hi everyone, Adam Steele from Hop Pole Studios here, and today I'm resurrecting what I thought was kind of a dead series. Uh, quite a long time ago now, I looked at the Raspberry Pi, which is this tiny little computer that you can get really cheap, and looked to see if you could use it for audio production. And as it turns out, there is now a Linux version of Reaper, which as you may know is my favourite production software, that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Now at the time, that became a bit of a dead end because the Raspberry Pi 3, which we had at the time, wasn't really powerful enough to handle a full mix and external plugins, like, you know, all the big names, Wave, Slate, all that kind of thing, they weren't working with it. So we ended up kind of at a stopping point. Now the plugin thing is still a problem, uh, but if you can use the stock plugins in Reaper, and I know that I definitely can, then I think this new thing, the Pi 400, should be powerful enough for you to do a full mix on. And we're going to try that in Studio B today. So here I am in my home office. It's rather bright this morning. And I have plugged in this, the Raspberry Pi 400. Yes, the keyboard is the Raspberry Pi now. That's, uh, yeah, that's the way it is these days. And it means that they can overclock the thing and it can, yeah, in the box, we don't have to do any overclocking. It just runs faster than the traditional Raspberry Pi. So let's move over on the screen to, there we go. Uh, this is Raspberry Pi OS that I have installed fairly fresh uh, a few weeks back. So that's ready to go. And I have also installed Reaper. There we go. So I downloaded that from Reaper's own website. Uh, there is a Linux version uh, and got that installed. Uh, there's a video earlier on in this series where I walk exactly through how to do that. So if you need to know how, go back in the series, check that out. It's a very old video now, but the process is exactly the same. And let's open that. Now for audio interface, I am using an Audient ID4. This is the old ID4 Mark 1. I. I know this works perfectly well with the Raspberry Pi because that's what I did the original video with. So that's what I'm using. I still have the ID14 Mark 2 hooked up to my big system, as it were. Let's hit close on this because that should. There we go. Now that that's connected, make sound. Now, the first thing I need to do here is I need to go to view monitoring effects because you can affect the output separately from the actual mix. And I'm going to use Restream to send the audio out from here to my recording software. So I'm sending audio over an IP 192.168.0 point. And I'll just find out what the IP address is quickly of main PC. So now if I hit play, we hear the sound. There it is. Okay, so headphones on. Um, I am using the headphones from the Slate VSX, but unfortunately that's not a uh, plugin that currently works on here. So I'm just going to be running just the headphones for this and no emulation. Now, this is Warm Things by Erin Snape. I mixed this on the channel a little while back. So I have, I've imported that onto here and you can see plenty of automation lines, edit lines. There are no effects going right now. Although you can see that I've set everything so that there's a load of uh, send to a room reverb and a plate reverb. There's no effect there at all yet though. So I'm just going to mute that right now and we're going to hit play and watch the performance meters. Okay, so that's taking 15% or so of the CPU before we even do any mixing, probably because of the complex 
routing that we have. Hmm. Right, well, let's, let's work this backwards. Let's start by soloing our room reverb channel, which... has nothing on. And what I'm going to do is add the reverb plugin because reverb can be used with IR files. So if you've got an impulse, I'll take out the dry signal, uh, you can add it in. And what I have done here is, uh, where's my yeah, documents? There we go. In here somewhere. Is that it? Yeah. I have all the uh, simplicity uh, Bricasti M7 samples that they made. And my favorite for room, if I can find it, is Studio B Close. Studio B Close, there we go. So I'm gonna put that under uh, M to S, cause that's the stereo impulse. Make sure I uh, choose apply 18 dB game before we uh, use it. And let's see how this sounds. There we go. Now you can see that's quite heavy on the processor. Uh, let's see, CPU usage. That's using, it says 3% of the CPU, but it's also taken the CPU processor meter up by a good 10%. Now at the bottom here, if we're looking for efficiency, there are little tick boxes, ZL and LL. Those are zero latency and low latency. When we're mixing, we don't need those at all. Those are relatively CPU intensive. If you're on a big system and you need things to be zero latency, that's great to have, but it does jack up the uh, process usage. Let's see how much this uses now. There we go, that's gone down from 25% to 20%. Big difference. And so I'm gonna copy this over to the plate reverb now and change the plate reverb out for a different one. So let's go up a folder, plates. Let's go with vocal plate. Uh, and have that very similar. So let's just listen to this on its own. Nice. Um, yeah. Let's add a filter in here just before and just take out anything below 200 ish shirts ish just to just to make that sound much lighter and in fact let's see what there we go let's see how our mix sounds before we even do any eq and compression Okay, so I've turned the choir group down significantly because they seem to come in way too loud. I must have had some sort of compressor on there. And with this being something where I'm using Control Alt and P as a Control Alt and P as a little shortcut to bring up the performance meter, which I'm just going to hide in the corner here, just make it a little smaller so we can still see it. Um, I'm going to. Uh, start with the main vocals. So I had a main vocal and a backing vocal here. I need to move that slightly so I can see my up and down E scroller. Ah, there we go. And it's only a matter of time. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the sends on these vocals to be... Oh. There we go. 
uh, room reverb and plate from the group itself. That should make things simpler, which means we can compress these vocals as a group. And I'm also going to take these two out of here because what I would have done before was process all these in groups, in groups, in groups, in groups, which is a little more CPU intensive, but on a modern desktop powerful machine, not a problem. But here we're trying to be conservative. Uh, let's have a listen to this. And it's only a matter of time Cause the dog barks and beckons you home That sounds nice, a little bit too much plate reverb on it. Now, um, let's use uh, the... There's a Stillwell plugin. There we go, RBJ. 1073 EQ. So I'm going to add in an 80. Oh, no, I'm going to go 160 hertz for a filter and see how that sounds. Hung in one slow gaze, living through sounds good. Surreal, and it's only a matter of time because the dog barks and beckons you home. There we go. So just a little bit of a low mid cut and a bit of a high shelf boost. Let's see what sort of process of percentage we're looking at for that. Sounds good. And it's only a matter of time. Cause the dog barks and back and And that's using less than half a percent of the CPU. That's fantastic. Right now, uh let's see, there was a 76 somewhere. Or did they call it a 77? Uh, let's look in the JS and see what we get for compressors. 1175 compressor, they called it. Okay, I'm going to put this after the EQ and see what that does. Hung in one slow gaze, living through the surreal. And it's only a matter of time, because the dog barks and beckons you home. Where a warm thing is waiting, cold life. Feet first, the berries can go. Warm thing, warm things, warm things, warm things. There we go. Now, one of the good things about this mix is I don't need heavy compression on anything, I don't think. So that was taken at maximum there, 9 dB of compression, which sounds really nice and smooth. And let's see the He's CPU usage. Living through the surreal, and it's only a matter of time. Nice. Now let's find the acoustics. Because that's the the acoustics. Oh, there's lots going on here. Uh, let's have a look. He's living through the surreal And it's only a matter of time Right, so this guitar has very old strings and sounds very dull. I'm just going to drag and drop the 1073Q here. Uh, and see what... There we go. That sounds much cleaner. I've got a big high shelf, uh, quite a significant mid cut there. Let's see about... There we go. And a, a shelf at 110 dB, which sounds like it makes no sense because there's already a 160 high pass, but it kind of makes the a bit of a lump in the low end. I happen to know that it's the same guitar three times here, so I can just copy this across. Ooh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a compressor Oh, that should have been on guitar one instead of the group. That's me being stupid, but that's fine. They're all now covered. 
especially when this kicks in. And now I can use a compressor and I don't think I want the 75 compressor because it's too aggressive. So uh, there's one, yeah, Fairchild, fairly childish, which is kind of Fairchild-esque, which has a uh, very mu design, which means that it compresses more the harder you hit it. So let's... There we go. I'm not hearing much pumping there, and that's holding together the guitars. Let's hear that with the vocals. Warmth will be here soon for a night, maybe more. And it's only a matter of time till the night calls and wraps you up close, and the days fall away in your life. Head first, the stories can go. Right, now to get clever, let's add in the bass. Now the bass sounds a little plain on its own. And it's going to the room reverb, which gives it a little bit of size, but I'm going to use reverb the plugin again. And this time, yeah, no zero latency, no low latency, don't need it. No dry, although I can play with the dry this time. I'm going to essentially turn this into the cleanest bass amp you've ever heard. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm using a an impulse response. Today I'm using uh, the Redwires SVT810 because it's the first thing I could get my hands on. Use a, a Neumann U47, kind of at the cone edge, one inch away. There we go. Oh boy, that's loud. Uh, let's change that to be applying 18, minus 18 dB again. There we go, much more effective than just using an EQ there, because that now um, is as if I've put that through a big 8x10 base cabinet uh, with uh, an amp on top that is theoretically perfectly clean, which some amps try to actually try and go for that. So from there, I can now use a compressor on this. Uh, let's use the Reaper Recomp. Uh, let's see how... Yeah, so this is adding 4,000 samples of latency. Oh boy. But that's normal because uh, there's no no zero latency mode on there, which means that the uh, the CPU is uh, not doing quite as much work. Now here's recomp. Let's start off with four to one compression ish, bit of a knee on there, and then bring our threshold down on the heavy part of the bass until it's controlling it. There we go. So we've got a nice, warm, compressed bass. If I need to EQ that, I can, but as it stands, if I don't have to, I won't. Let's try that in with the guitars.
Right, so now we've got the real trick, which is the choir group. Uh, all these channels going on. The fact that I've folded them should make this a lot less proce processor intensive if I can get the right balance. So the first thing we're going to do is add that 1073 EQ to the choir. I'm going to clear the solo and everything and just listen to this. Cool, let's hear that compared to the original. That sounds nice. Uh, let's hear that. Right, so the choir was overtaking everything there, so now we need to look at the compression. Does look like that volume boost that I had there is a little much now. But let's hear this song from earlier on. Okay, looks like our plate reverb generally is just much more excited than we had previously because I've got this drums section and that really now is uh, making the echo go crazy. So let's listen to that. This needs a Reposone EQ because it's far more specific than something like that really nice one that we had before. I don't want to cut the low, on, low end out of this. I do actually want more. There we go. There's a lot of ugliness at the top. And I'm also gonna shelve the ultra top. Uh, 
take that out a little as well. No. Right, and everything's a little quiet overall, so I'm going to use, let's find out, is there a limiter? Yes, Event Horizon, perfect. I'm going to turn up Event Horizon. Sounds great. Is there any tape? Em There's no tape emulation in here. That's fine. I was really starting to <laughs> really pushing that. Although, um, having said that, so is the Bad Bus Mojo in here? Yeah, Bad Bus Mojo. Uh, Bad Bus Mojo, I'm going to put on the Master Bus and see if I can get just a little bit of niceness. Yeah, there is a premium version of this plugin, Bad Bus Mojo, that shows you exactly what each of these controls mean. Uh, it's kind of like a saturator type thing. Uh, it's hard to describe how it works uh, without absolutely killing it. Uh, because it will distort if I really go mad. What I want is a very subtle distortion, kind of like a tape bus distortion, that kind of thing. So hopefully this sounds nice. It might not. Warm things, warm places, keep you safe, keep you living. Was that? Warm things, warm places, keep you safe, keep you living. Take a step outside, look at trees, look at berries with two brimming eyes. It's a breeze to be merry Standing takes an age So the world becomes real Hung in one slow gaze Living through the surreal And it's only a matter of time Cause the dog box beckons you Bye.
Hello. What a lovely song. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Thank you. I think those dropouts there were because I've chosen a dodgy cable to connect my ID4 to the Raspberry Pi so it keeps dropping out because the connection's bad. That's. I don't think that's a reflection on the Pi itself. But there you go. Um, I mixed that in a very short amount of time using a very small amount of plugins on a Raspberry Pi using everything that was already in built there. And the Raspberry Pi itself costs, what, $100 for the, for the Pi 400, the one that's already got a keyboard, even comes with a mouse. Uh, and yeah, and comes with a power supply and all that kind of stuff. You're not getting much more affordable as a mix platform. I mean, wow. So there you go. Um, can it be done? It can be done. You will start to run up against uh, processor limitations if you push it too hard, but you can always freeze a track that's got processing on if you have to. So yeah, there you go. Back to me. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something useful out of it. I think these are still a little way off from kind of the prime time, but especially with the new development of the Apple M1 chips, which are the same kind of type of chip in essence as the Raspberry Pi chip. They're not the same, but they're the same kind of family, the ARM family. That means that a lot of uh, software developers are now developing their software for ARM chips, where traditionally they just wrote them for the big boys, like the one behind me, which is x86 that's the the name of the platform for all the big intel and amd stuff uh, so in the future i think with more and more powerful versions of these and that being on the horizon it's very possible within the next year or two we'll see very affordable powerful little portable rigs for now hope you got something out of this and enjoyed it thank you very much for watching Hit the like button, look at our Patreon, look at our affiliate links. It all helps us to do more of this kind of crazy stuff. Check out the six hour long video that we did uh, comparing every kind of guitar speaker that we could get our hands on by Celestian. There's all sorts of stuff that we've done that you could watch on YouTube. So please do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.